And welcome back, everyone. This is Ellington, and here we are back on Total War Rome 2. And we have got ourselves a three versus three battle. Whoops, I hit the wrong button there. There we go. 3v3 three three vers uh, three versus three battle on the settlement of Bertigala here. Uh, if you have been watching the channel, or honestly, most YouTubers' channels, you know Bertigala, and you know what we're going to get here. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some armies. So, for the attackers, we have got Parthia being commanded by MJXL. Then over here, we've got Bowie I being commanded by Russian Bot. And finally, our Verni, the person who sent this in, is too crafty um, commanding our Verni here. I think I said our Verni, but whatever. Our Verni, it's the green one. For the defenders, we've got, we'll start over here since there's already some stuff going on. Pergamon being commanded by Yurtle, Yurtle the Turtle. Then we've got Masaisley being commanded by Cayman, something Cayman. And then finally, Macedon being commanded by Nick Bosna. Bosna, I think is what it was. But uh, yeah, so this one was sent in by Arverni here. Now, this is not what I would call an in-house battle, but it was sent in by somebody from the broader community in um, the Arverni player here. Uh, Cayman, or no, not Cayman. Uh, gosh, what's his name? Too Crafty. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, so a little bit you know, differ. We're going to see what happens here. I believe this is on Ultra Funds because we have got lots of lots of big boys. We got a ton of Agima Spears, ton of Desert Cohorts, ton of Osworn, ton of Osworn. Um, and so it's going to be a good one. Now you can see that the defenders are choosing to just fully give up this corner. That is not an uncommon tactic. The one downside to this at the moment is honestly just that they are pretty exposed to that artillery fire. But I think they're lucky because I think there's only one artillery. Yep. Our, our Parthia here, I think, making a very wise choice and saying, screw that. Um, this side over here is just not fun. If you're going to push this side, you want to do it in a, as a late push after your allies have already pushed here. Um, then you can kind of move your way over here and start doing that. But first, you typically want to, you know, secure this whole area and then kind of work your way that way. Now, we've got Arverni already engaging on the far left, but they are taking their time in advancing here. Although you can see Bowie Eye moving in already with sword followers. We're not going to see very many low tier units on this battle, guys. I was told I take too many screenshots at once, so I'm going to try and uh, avoid doing that as much as I can. Yeah, I'm looking at you, rookie guy. Looking at you. Talk about getting called out on the internet, sir. Everybody's going to be like, wow, this guy just really doesn't like this rookie guy. Look at how many Osworn there are. I mean, it's just absurd. One, two, three, four. I'm assuming, no, that's a noble horse. Then Arverni's got one, two, three, four, five, including his general. And they're all like, look at that. They're already tiered up by two. Well, this one, the general is, at least. To be honest with you, I'm not typically a huge fan of tearing up your units. Uh, it just, like, obviously, if you have built your army and you have a couple, you know, a couple gold left over that you need to use, that's a different story. But it just, you know, all it really adds, if I remember correctly, is uh, melee defense. So melee attack, melee defense, place morale. Which isn't bad, you know what I mean? It's just, especially for No Sworn, that's that's quite a bit of money. Looks like they're basically just kind of ammo dumping these Agima Spears at the moment. They did a ton of damage to this one. Pretty sure it's this one. Look at the Galatian Swords. They have three Galatian Swords, all triple chevroned. 
And I think that's Parthia's archers that were that were shooting the the Agima spear here. Yeah, they all have a, a solid chunk of kills. So once again, look at the the for especially for archers, the tearing up like this really just isn't worth it. Um, you know, really. So would you? give them one chevron it increases their shots per minute which is nice but outside of that it doesn't do anything else it, it doesn't increase so let's say you do sh two chevrons you don't get more shots per minute um so really all it does is it increases like your base morale some more and melee attack you know what i mean for an archer that's basically useless got the pig peltus moving up one of my favorite units are they gonna fire Give it to them! Nope, I guess not. Watch, I'm going to move away and they're going to start shooting. So, Desert Cohort still holding the front. Let's see, 85 kills, 91 kills. Now looking at the Sword Followers, 31. The Sword Followers just getting picked apart by Slingers, it looks like. 16 so far on the Slingers. Thorax Swords going up against some Chosens. The Chosens should be able to get the better of that, though. Thorax Swords, in all reality, we consider them as kind of the baseline infantry. When you're talking about uh, judging other infantry, majority of the time, most people judge them compared to the Thorax. And the reason for that is because it basically is the most average baseline basic infantry, mid-tier infantry that there is in the game. And it is, you know, everywhere. There's so many different factions that have Thorax Swords that it is a good unit to compare to. Um, but the Chosens are going to be just a tip, you know, I would say a tick above those Thorax and left to their own devices should win this battle. But it looks, yeah, so... Good job by Mastodon getting some good angle shots here. Getting sword side jabbies. Which is good for Mastodon. That means that he is probably going to give his unit the edge here. Uh, now, Arverni has thrown in a Celtic warrior to assist in that. And then on the far left, we've got Parthians and shows. Did, are they, oh, they sent. Okay, so they broke down the gate got in far enough to neutralize the gate and so now they've got units coming in through here but they also threw a chosen sword up through here which is okay because since it's neutralized the the chosen sword doesn't get killed by the um oil then the gallic hunters over here move over to the side getting good shots off here they need to be careful though although i I think something is shooting the tribals. Because these tribal singers are shooting the Gallic Hunters, which are shooting those guys. But the... Okay, yeah, there it is. They're getting shot from... I think it's this guy right here. It's a good angle. When you're facing, it's, it's so much better to take shots from the side here than try to take shots from the front. Eastern Cataphracts, oh man, a lot of Cav from Parthia. Two Eastern Cataphracts and a Royal Cataphract. And I did notice that Bowie Eye has got Heavy Horse and Spear Warriors off to the flank, which is good because there tend to be, you know, just in case of any sort of sally out from the back or anything. I think it's Parthia, it took a lot of damage. This is, I believe, the Parthian that was in combat here. And really, six kills, that's it. 95 men left. Not getting a very good trade there. Starting to get a bit thin up here. Even now, you can see the defenders are starting to shore up the, the flanks and stuff. Uh, bringing more units in to assist. You can see Bowie Eye just unleashing hell. Celtic Bows, good side shot there. Now, this is still shield side, but uh, it's, it's still a good shot to take. It's just not as good as what your uh, sword side shots would be. 
Now, I always mix up for, for Parthia. I always mix up the two. They've got the elite Persian archers, but then they have the Parthian foot archers. And I can't remember. I think this is the one that you don't want to bring. I think the Parthian foots are the ones you want to bring because the elite Persians are the ones that give you, like, melee stats. Pretty sure that's what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, I always mix up those two. Uh, so let me know in the comment section if I am wrong about that. Which I know we've got some experts in the, you know, watching the video. So someone will inform me whether I'm right or wrong about that. Good cycle here by Arverni. Actually, quite a bit of a pushback here. Look at this. The defenders pushing the attackers back. This is the original line of battle here. But look how much ground they have gained. We even have some mercenary Thracian warriors coming in, but they are now getting shot. Who brought those? That's a mastodon, duh. I'm stupid. And then there's another one? Or was this? Uh, okay, it's just their flag was separated. He probably, you either want to engage with that, you want to get him out of there. They are getting shot pretty good. And also, don't throw them into the back of their own un of your own unit. See, what happens is you just get stuck behind the line of battle here, so that charge is disrupted. So if you're going to throw that unit in, take the Agima Spear out at the same time, then it should give you much better results there. Parthian Swords, 13 kills. Sword Followers, 56. Going up again. Oh, man. Galatian Swordsman, 234 kills there. And their artillery coming in. Where was that? The hell? Maybe the, is the Celtic just firing right over here, maybe? By the way, the Celtic Giant Ballista, 134 kills. 143 now. And you can see Bowie Eye bringing more Celtics over here to continue shooting into the back of this flank. It's been a pretty good, pretty good fight so far, honestly. Osworn now in combat. The Thorax Swords are not going to be able to compete with that, so they are going to have to be really smart here. Uh, really, what they want to be looking into doing is using the javeli javelins, javeli javelins, javelins, effectively. Um, cycling their units, shoot them to death. That's really going to be their best bet because those Thorax Swords are never going to... Oh, look at the back, look at the back. Numidian Riders from Masesli. I'm going to guess that they were hiding over in this forest. Uh, and now they are coming in trying to find something to get to. You can see Arverni trying to kind of shell up here. Although he's bringing his archers over to the side and might expose that. Oh, don't charge it. Don't charge it. It's a bad idea. Nah, it's a, it's a bad idea. The mini riders are really not the greatest. Really, the only thing they're good at is getting into archers or artillery. But if you charge, honestly, pretty much anything else, they're really just going to die pretty easily. You can see Bowie Eye bringing his, his heavy horse over. It's going to be a while. He's got a good couple minutes before he gets over here to help. But the Noble Horse General for Bowie Eye now coming over as well. Mercenary Thracian Warriors from the Defenders, 19 kills. Not great. Pick Belt is 43, 49. This O Sworn, 146 with a Chevron, 61 men left. 151 with 126 men left. Once again, those Thorax really just not holding up well against this. Against this onslaught. Now, the Osworn is now winded. You should probably maybe cycle with the Chosen Sword or something. Um, and really, they, they need to get more men up here quick because this is getting a bit thinner than I would like to see. Definitely want to see some more men in here to cycle or just to fill in over on the far left. Bit 
wait here. To be honest with you, Parthia seems to be the weakest left. Got a couple Parthian swords here. I guess he's, he's got a couple different things, but they're still outside the settlement. More artillery coming in. Can't believe Bowie Eye is still firing. 172 kills so far with a Chevron. Numidian Riders, gone. Like I said, I just... Uh, I think they probably should have held on to that one a little longer. Those four Numidian Riders, I think, could have done work, uh, given the right situation. But I think that that was probably a bit early to bring them in. Uh, I don't think that the attackers had any idea that they were there. So it was a good ambush that was sprung a little too early. Once again, I'm pretty sure they were set here because that's really the only place that you can guerrilla deploy that cavalry in a like wooded spot. Numidian riders don't have um, stock or no, yeah, stock. So that means that even though they could grill deploy, as soon as the game starts, they are seen. Unless they are in a wooded area, then the wooded area means that they are then, you know, um, concealed when they first start up. And on this side, that's really the only wooded area that you could grill deploy for Numidian Riders. And honestly, a lot of attackers will just check that spot to make sure that there isn't anything there. It's not a bad idea. Osworn here is kind of strung out because some of the men are still coming off of the tower. You can also see the Parthian swords now getting in. Now the Osworn are going to chew through this line, but at the same time they are getting javied to hell from behind the line. So I'm interested to see how that's going to go. I think the Osworn are probably not going to perform as well as you would want them to because of all the javelins coming in but they should grind their way through these units pretty easily. Got a Royal Peltus in from Macedon, 102 kills so far. Still got Desert Cohort, 102, 53. Problem with Desert Cohorts, I was saying it in a recent video, Desert Cohort is one of those kind of odd, awkward units, right? So they're too good to be a mid-tier, but they're not quite good enough to be a high-tier. They also don't get any abilities. They don't get use the whip or headhunt or anything of the sort. So it makes it very awkward because they they beat one tier but lose to the other. And that can make them very kind of tough situationally. So like right now, Oathsworn are going to beat them up. But the Parthian Swords, they should win easily. Oathsworn over here getting beat to hell. They've got 247 kills, though, so they have done very well. But you can see it's those mercenary Cretan archers shooting right into a sword side shot. Well done by Mastodon. I, I have to say, I think this may be some of the better play I've seen from names that I don't know. And that that's impressive. I, I really like to see that. I think that just as proof that the community itself has grown in its skill level, which in in my personal, like, that's what I want. I've always wanted to be a channel that could help people up their game by showing them good gameplay. And I think this they've done really well here, and, and I'm really impressed by this. So very well done by the, the by all the players so far. Obviously, there are things here and there that happens to everybody, right? But that doesn't matter whether you're an in-house player, you're an experienced player, or you're a newer player. You know, shit happens, and sometimes you just don't don't know. You know what I mean? Look at this. Those were 308 kills. My honestly, the biggest mistake I've seen so far is the Numidian Rider ambush. I think it was just a little premature. Um, and also, I think that they really should have taken down a wall section here. It would have made getting into the settlement much easier. Typically, the walls that people will usually go for are either this one or this one. Um, and it just, once again, it just allows for easier access into the settlement 
to then be able to, you know, resu- you know, resupply and support these lines a little bit better. Because right now the attack is stalling mostly just due to the fact that they're having troubles kind of keeping up the support. They still have, I think also one big thing that I would say, Parthia, three units of cavalry, and not just three units of cavalry, but three expensive units of cavalry. You you have your royal cataphracts, but then you have two units of eastern cataphracts. I think it's a bit much for an attacker. Because you're bet you're you're betting on the fact that you will be able to get those cav in the settlement, okay, and that is a big bet. That's a big if, right? You have to be able to now. Had you busted down a wall, that's a different story. But right now you're banking on the fact that you're going to capture this because that is the only way you have into this settlement for that cavalry is that gate. So that is like, what, 3,000 something gold sitting right there? Just saying. Now look at this, they've actually gained a little bit of ground. The attacker, or the defenders here, have actually given up this area. They've come up to throw javelins, and it looks like they may contest now, but the attackers have actually gotten up a little bit. This over here is just a mosh pit man um, you can see army Numidian riders coming up he brought the warrior general which I I kind of like I kind of don't so I think the warrior general is kind of fun so warrior general what it does is it has one ability to hurt your morale and one ability to take away an ability use so you could use it on the Osworn and they wouldn't be able to use their head hunt for like 30 seconds or something like that but then you could use it on the Parthian sword here that was a yellow morale. That can actually help you break that unit. I like that, but it is usually, I like that warrior general, but it is usually best used in tandem with like a Swaby and fire arrows or something like that. Uh, you know, a faction that has units that have a fear effect, right? So, Swaby has wolf warriors, berserkers, things like that. Um, I'm trying to think. My brain is blanking right now on others. Um, Aravaki has painted war or yeah, painted painted swords, painted warriors. I always mix up the two between Iceni and Aravaki. Two sixty. Man, the Osworn are really just just racking it up here. And I think that just goes to show that a lot of the units that the defenders have, they just don't really have the quality to throw up against what the quality of the attackers is. Mostly due to the fact that a game, you know, um, Pergamon doesn't get a high tier unit. A game of spears are not what I would call high tier. Um, Masesli doesn't get a high tier unit. Once again, Desert Cohorts I would not call high tier. And Mastodon is the only one that gets high tiers, and that's their Royal Peltis. And Royal Peltis are very highly susceptible to Archer Fire. So it's one of those things that can be a little tough. So right now they're really just outmatched on the fact that they don't really have anything to go toe-to-toe with what, eight Osworn we saw, nine Osworn we saw. Looks like Parthia has also been using formation attack. You can see that's a, just a very straight line for a Parthian sword. 91 kills on it. Got the archers shooting over the tribal slingers. Bounce power is pretty pretty heavy in the the uh, attacker's favor at this point. Parthian Swords 136, that's pretty solid. Uh oh. Run away, Mazadon. Oh, here we got some pikes. We got pikemen from Pergamon. Given how far we are into this battle and how much battle we have seen, I guarantee the attackers do not have what it, uh, or the defenders, excuse me, do not have what it's going to take to hold this area like, like you will typically see as the next fallback. I almost guarantee they're going to fall back to like this or this maybe even 
I think it's going to be like this. Because they have thrown a lot into this defense. I mean, look at this, guys. Look at that. That is just ridiculous. Just a crazy amount of death has happened already. We know the defenders are have one pike, so um, that's going to be one position that they have relatively solidly held. Um, given the, let's look at the ammo situation. Gallic Hunters probably still have a, a, a small amount. The Elite Persians seem like they've been firing quite a bit, but I would still give them, at l I would sorry, probably say just under half ammo. This one's probably out. No ammo, two chevrons. Uh, but I think he gave himself at least one of those two chevrons. And then... Bowie Eyes, Celtic... Bows are probably out. 92 kills on that one. And it, maybe the rest are gone. I think the rest must be gone because that one's 92 kills and I don't see any more. Look at the, the Celtic Giant Ballista crew coming in to finish off the Desert Cohort. Be the nail in the coffin right there. Poor little unit just trapped up against this little spot. Parthias moved forward a bit. Parthia, you know, we were talking about how the defenders have kind of been outmatched on the high tier area, but Parthia specifically has been on the opposite end of the spectrum. The Parthian swords have pretty much been outmatched by almost everything on the defender's side. You know, Desert Cohorts beat them. The Gema Spears beat them. You know, Javis, of course, are... Oh. One, two, three. I'm going to... I can't tell if that was a pike. I think that was another foot companion right there. Wow. Um, and he's got at least an archer with full ammo. So you have two pikemen from Pergamon, at least one foot companion, but I'm pretty sure it's two foot companions, which foot companions are actually a pretty solid pike, guys. They have not the greatest armor, but they have 49 melee attack for a pike. To give you an idea, look at the, the regular pikemen, 34. Very big difference there. And now you can see everything on the outside is pretty much done with. So now the advance to the final area and the final defense. We're going to go and fast forward a little bit. Since there's nothing happening right now. So the tribal slingers looks like they have plenty of ammo. They have the Cretan archer with plenty of ammo. And yes, it is another foot companion. Another Cretan Archer, looks like plenty of ammo. Army Numidian Rider General, Standard Archer with ammo. Oh man, this could be really tough for the attackers because their one bet against the defending pikemen is being able to shoot them to death. One, I don't think they have enough ammo to kill all four pikes. The question would then be, can they kill enough of the pikes to allow gaps to open up, right? Number two, not only do I think they don't have enough ammo to kill all the pikes, I don't know that they're going to be able to anyways due to the, there is actually archer ammo and slinger ammo left here that is going to help compete with that archer f fight, right? So the Cretans are gonna be able to kind of zone out or hopefully zone out the the archers of the attackers here so it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens Get i'm actually interested to see how this goes 
I think the archers here are trying to set up for something. But honestly, I don't, I don't know. I think you hold your ammo. I don't think there's really anything here to, that's really worth a shot. I think the armor Numidian riders thought about coming to the back here, but realized it probably wasn't worth it. All right, tribal slingers are now shooting into the elite Persians. Now, what I don't really get is the elite Persians don't need to be this close to shoot. The elite Persians can use the absolute extent of their range to shoot these foot companions. And then the tribal singers wouldn't be able to shoot them from here. They would have to move forwards just due to the fact that they can be farther away to shoot the foot companions than the tribals can be to shoot them. I don't know if that made sense coming out, but it made sense in my brain. Now, they are doing some damage. The Foot Companions, remember, they only have 70 armor. That is pretty low for the Elite Pike area. You know, if you look at the Silver Shields, I think they've got 95 armor. Same thing, Hellenic, uh, Hellenic uh, Royal Guard. They've also got a pretty high armor rating. So they, they really... So see, look at this. Gal Hunters are shooting the Foot Companions from a position that the tribal singers can't do anything about. And honestly, there's nothing that they can do about it. A lot of wasted ammo, stop it. Stop wasting ammo, you need to save that. Oh God, they're just. <sighs> and the, once again, just why, your job as the archers is to Get rid of theirs. Because you have the defense that they can't do anything about. Pikes. Okay? That is the one real thing that they can't do anything about. And now the, the cataphracts and such, they might be able to expose this position here. Because that is one thing is they only have four pikes. They really need two to hold this. They need one to hold this, but they need like two to hold this. So that is one thing that they could probably expose here is with their cavalry, they might be able to expose this. They do still have the armor Numidian Rider, but that is not gonna take on an Eastern Cataphract, let alone two and a Royal Cataphract. Now, the other thing that the attackers may have is if they have any Javis left, which I highly doubt that they do, they might be able to weaken up this one foot companion enough to expose this position. You can see the heavy horse and the noble horse moving around the back. Where is this, the second pike unit? That's what I want to know. You can see they are completely avoiding this and they have to. There's no even, no chance, no reason to even try advancing on this yet. You can see this Oswarden apparently did have some ammo, some javelins left. So he is throwing, and that's, that's good, you know what I mean? That's whatever you can do to take down as many of these as possible is going to help you out. Then I think I saw, are the Galax shooting again? I thought I saw arrows. Oh, if they're out of ammo for the Gallic Hunters, that's that's a big oof. And it looks like they are. So I am highly interested to see what's going to... Oh, they do have a Pergamine Noble Cav. So that, that helps. That helps. So they put the pike over here. Interesting. It's not quite wide enough. They probably want to put something here to zone it out or to fill this. Or I guess they could use the cab to countercharge anything that tries to expose this. But they also have the wall that they can get through. Although really only an infantry unit would be able to use that truthfully. I would suggest maybe putting the Royal Peltis General over here to one back up the pike throw javies but also fill in the gap when needed 
They're sending slingers over. It's not a bad idea. Slingers should be able to be a nuisance. And here comes the advance. 98 and 139. Cretan archers 175 and uh, 44. So they still have ammo. And so do they. If I was you, I'd probably be shooting the Osworn, though. These spikes are going to get lots of kills. What is shooting? Is that a... What's shooting the pikes? Look like arrows came from over here. Is there a Gallic Hunter? No. Uh, the Celtics, but it looked like it came from the other way. But yeah, Celtic bows are shooting this. And this is where you have problems. So they're going to bring the other pike unit over here, but once again, now you're empty. Right, Osworn going in, and the pikes are kind of out of formation because of the arrow shots and such. So the Osworn might actually be able to get in and do some damage here. Foot companions are going to break. They held just long enough that the pike was able to get in, though. What is your plan? Is what I want to know. It's a tough situation to be in. The Cav is trying to, once again, trying to exploit that one position that they just opened up. Now the Royal Peltas coming in. Now the Royal Peltas, I don't know why they're not used to, they, oh, don't tell me you're out of Javis with only 18 kills. Royal Peltas are one of those units that kind of gets a little bit of an odd, so they get, get three javelins. So your regular infantry, so like let's say your Oswaran, your Chosen Sword, they get two javelins. Then you have things like your Agima Spears and your Thoreau Spears. They get four or five javelins. I think it's five. Um, and then you get your, like, Peltis units that get seven and ten, so on and so forth. The Royal Peltis get three, not two, not five, three. They should have gone Shield Wall here. Oh, they did, they did, so that's good. Looks like they still took a pretty good chunk, though. They're going to have to use these cav... Well, okay, so you got the pike, so never mind. Yeah, they're going to have to use these cav to just shore up these lines. Eastern Cataphracts coming back in. Shield wall is going to help. So it helped. Really, only a couple kills out of that. Why does it seem like the Royal Peltas get taking more damage than I'm seeing register here? Maybe, oh, it's because like half of one of the units is charged in, but half it's back here. This one is at 22 kills, so that's why. I hate when that happens. Just nuking these Parthian swords. Now you got Osworn coming in as well over on the backside. This is their weak link at the moment. The Royal Peltus is not made for standing here and holding a position. They're not made for this. And now with the Osworn, the Osworn's a better unit than the Royal Peltus, so they are going to uh, they're gonna get that. Look at the Osworn here, 119 kills with 165 kills. Or 100, 119 men with 100, uh, whatever, 170 now kills. 
and starting to rack up. Once again, Royal Peltis not made for this kind of fight. The Pergamine Noble Cav and the Armor Numidian Rider charging in like that are really, it's just not even, it's not really helpful. It's not really going to do anything for that Osworn unit. Get moving. Levy Freeman trying to sneak around. Got an archer unit here shooting. Oh, this Royal Peltis breaking. This is big, bad. Big, bad. And the Macedonian general's dead. Luckily, base morale is 70 on a lot of on those foot companions. Otherwise, they could be in a lot more trouble. And now they're trying to rush the other pikemen over, but it, it is far too late. And, it, and by, oh, man. And now what's gonna happen? The Eastern Cataphracts are just gonna go the other way. It's a big oof. You better set your position there, Pikes. Full mop! Cretan archers just dumping into all these on these uh, Bowie I Cav. The two Cav units for the defenders are going to have to just desperately hold on. Pergamine Noble Cav are pretty good. Armored Dominion Riders are pretty good, but they're both. Uh, I mean, the Pergamine Noble Cav could probably go decently toe to toe with one of these two units, but with all three of those cataphracts, I hate to say, but I think this is GG. I think we're still going to start seeing some army losses here in a moment. See, they're setting up back to, well, uh, maybe not. I thought they were going back to back, but no. Take the hit, and this is when things come crashing down. They just, they just didn't have quite enough to hold even this position. If they had even like one or two Agima Spears left, I think they probably would, probably would have won this. Because then they really could have solidified their pike lines with like the Gima Spears holding or something like that. But there's just a bit too much to hold here. But a good game, good game. I actually, I thought this was really good. I thought this game was really solid. Once again, especially given that it was players that I, I didn't recognize the names of any of them. Um, and honestly, a lot of times that makes me nervous. Uh, I think is really a credit to the players today. Um, let's go ahead and start off here. So Parthia, Parthia, I really, honestly, for the most part, don't really blame here. Really just outclassed by almost everything on the other side. Um, his cataphracts did actually pretty solid. Arches did pretty solid. Infantry just... Man, everything he had was outclassed by almost everything on the other side. We got a uh, <laughs> Arverni here being commanded by two crafty with 3,000 kills. 3,000. All of his Osworn just doing work. 432 carrying the day there. Russian bot as Bowie Eye, 2580. By the way, 3,000 is the most in the game. 2580 as Bowie Eyes, Osworn once again doing work, 320, 318. For the defenders, a valiant defense here, 2178 by Masasely. Uh We got Cayman Cider, that's that's who sent the, or no, uh, um, shit, who was it? It was, damn, I forgot. I think it was too crafty who sent it, never mind. I don't know, I my brain just went... The Came Insider is Masasui 2178. The Desert Cohort kind of in an awkward position because they were outclassing Parthia and the Sword Followers, but they were having troubles, obviously, with the Osworn. 
but still coming out with 2178 is doing pretty good. Nick Bosner as Mas uh, Macedon 1602 archers doing just look at that awesome very very well done pikes just didn't really even have a chance to succeed um royal peltis having a rough day just i hate to say kind of have a rough day as a whole outclassed by a lot of the um you know osworn and such yurtle the turtle as pergamon 22 uh, 2200 flat carrying the kills here for the defenders, although really only getting a, just a few more than Masasely. The Game of Spears doing very, very well. But even the Galatian Swords, 250, 127, not bad, not bad. Well, that is going to be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget that if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.